Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Tuplex. As you can see, I've been moving the crawler around to get some more trees. Uh, I've moved up here to the north of the base, close to where we're making our pitifully <laughs> slow steel production. Um, hmm. You know, might be a good idea to uh, to double up on this. Let me go ahead and do that. I need to get some stone. Um, what I want to do is just double the double the ore sorting that I've got going on here. Uh, let's see if I actually need more crushers. I think two crushers to one is the right ratio. Uh, net machines, yeah. Sorry, I'm not really sure how to read this. All right, I think I'm gonna have to use uh, the planner instead. Let's add another one here. All right, so we'll do... Can I put in the recipe? Crushed sapphirite or sorting. That's what I want to do. And I want to compute it for one machine. And we're going to be using the... Let me walk away from that so it's not so loud. Alright, using the Mark 1. We need crushed sapphire. Also by machine. And if we use a Mark 1 crusher, it says we only need one. I don't think that's correct. That doesn't seem right. Because I'm using two and they're both busy. Crusher one, yep. Yeah, I don't think this is right. Let's let's look at it here. All right, it takes four crushed sapphire every second, and this gives us two crushed sapphire every second. Yeah, so that. It's not calculating properly. I don't know why, but um, although, well, let's just try it. Let's see what happens if we turn one off. But I think this is going to end up slowing down. Um, now these two were occasionally going yellow, but I think it's just because of how fast the inserters are working. Oh, right. Okay, I'm dumb. It's because the crafting speed on the crusher is 1.5 and on the sorter it's 0.75. All right, well, it makes sense now. Okay. Well, I do apologize for my stupidity. I shouldn't be too hard on myself, I know, but... Alright, and then we'll move that as well. Let's see, let's move that right there. power poles. So that's going to go there, that's going to go there. Okay. Now let's make another one of those ore sorting facilities. Um, 
Where is it? There we go. Now, one thing I wanted to um, to start working on today. Um, you know, I mentioned in, in the last episode, I think, that I want to start preparing to make uh, wood so that we can reduce our reliance on the raw wood that we're collecting with the crawler. Um, so I started to make... Well, not started. I actually finished making um, a plan here where we can create the wood boards. You know, these are the wood boards that we first make from raw wood. Um, and then these go into the basic circuit boards, the brown ones. Um, so if we can make these by using some other method, then we can reduce our consumption of raw wood by quite a bit. We'll still need raw wood for now to make resin. But, um, but we can make these wood boards from algae. Uh, so I put together a plan uh, to get 8 per second, which is what our current capacity is. Uh, we would need this. Uh, we would have to build an, uh, a farm to make green algae. We convert that to cellulose fiber. Um, we would also need to make cellulose paste, which uses some fiber and some sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide comes from saline water, which we're already making in our fuel plant. Um, and we're currently just clarifying a lot of it. So we can, use, uh, we can use saline water to make the sodium hydroxide that we need to make the paste. So then the paste and the cellulose fibers combine and those make the wood boards. Uh, we also need mineralized water to make the algae. Um, and that comes from crushed stone, so that will give us um, a place to send our stone and slag that we don't need. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this plan right now. Um, however, what I'd like to do before we get to that, um, because it'll help us reduce the size of this facility, is I'd like to, I'd like to start making clay brick so that we can make mark II machinery so right now you know we're using the mark ones which are a little bit slower with mark II, uh, you can produce things faster and in some cases you can produce more sophisticated recipes so for example a mark one ore sorting facility um, can be upgraded to a Mark II by adding some steel, some circuit boards, and clay brick. And so clay brick is the only thing that we don't have right now. Um, and that's what I want to work on today is getting some clay brick production started. All right, uh, let us, I think we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna need to upgrade to a warehouse here. Uh, let's see, one, two, three. All right, yeah, let me, um, I'm just going to empty this out so I can remove it. Right, and then we'll put in the warehouse. So let's see, one, two. I didn't put that in a very good place, did I? I should move these over. Let's do that. Let's move this over a bit so that I have more room for the warehouse. So we'll take a blueprint and then we'll pick it all up. My nanobots going. Oh, I also need to. I also need to automate nanobots. Uh, that's the other thing I wanted to do today. And in fact, we'll probably do that first after we get the steel going, and then we'll work on the clay brick. All right. So let's. I'm gonna relocate all of this. Okay. So what I would like to do here is put a warehouse. Where's my loader? There we go. Okay, and then this needs to be filtered for only iron ore at this point in time, which is in 
Metallurgy? Yeah, there we go. Iron ore. Okay. And then we can... No. Yeah, only, only copper and slag goes in there. Now we can place this one, two, three. There we go. All right. here and then we bring down the stone there we are okay now these let's look at basic inserters Right, so on outputs, we can use, well, no, we need a total of these. So 0.9, we need like two regular inserters. So I think one fast inserter on the outputs will be enough there. Okay, right, so sorry about that. Uh, about that mistake earlier with the uh, with the crushers, and actually these are in slightly the wrong position. Let me fix that real quickly. Uh, or crushers. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so with that, uh, with that small upgrade, we should be able to get steel out twice as fast. At least that's my hope. Uh, it's still too slow. Um, and then I can also see that we're running a bit low on copper. Well, not too much now, but uh, the other thing that we can start to do is we can start to make copper using this process with all the copper ore that we're producing over here, but we'll, we'll save that for a later time. Right now I want to get the other stuff going, get the washing going. All right, so let's, uh, let's move our crawler a bit and keep picking up trees. So, um, as I mentioned, the next thing that I want to do, just uh, kind of quickly before we get into designing and building more stuff, is to automate nanobots and, what was the other one? Oh, and loaders. I'd like to automate loaders as well. So let's just see if we can do that fairly quickly. And then we'll work on the clay bricks. All right, so down here in the in the mall, 
all of our chests are full, so we now have lots of good stuff. I think at this point I'm going to stop using wooden power poles and start to use steel ones instead. We can also get the big electric poles uh, since we've got those available. Um, here they are. I'll just grab one stack of each for now. Um, we could use another stack of fast inserters. I'll grab a stack of long inserters. Uh, let's get some yellow belts. And I'll get one stack of reds. Yeah, I'll just do like one stack each of the red stuff in my inventory. I don't want to fill up my inventory too much. That's that's why I'm not just going hog wild here. Okay, and that'll be that'll be good for now, I think. All right, so um, the nanobots we already know how to do, and we can do those with purely with iron. But I don't think I'm going to have enough room here. So I think we'll have to add it down this way. All right, so if actually, well, let's look at our production chain first. So iron axes and repair packs. So we are gonna need circuit boards and gears. All right, so the repair packs, I think we should put right here. And then if I put one, two, three, if I put the nanobots right here, then the iron ax could go here, for example, or it could go right here. And then here would be the stick. Yeah, let's do it like that. And this will be an iron iron stick. Okay. Now we do need to extend the gear belt. All right. So that'll feed it gears. And then the circuits we can get from there. Um, and then I think we'll buffer these in a chest because it'll be good to have repair packs available when we require them. Okay, and then iron axes and iron sticks. I don't think we need to buffer those. And for that, I'll just run a line of iron up this way. take to craft one second so uh, yellow inserter there and again we'll limit that to two stacks like we did previously all right so let's fire this up oops all right so we'll do a pull there we'll do one where are we doing these all right just want to be consistent here. This is the general power grid. There we go. Okay, good. And then, yeah, the other one that I wanted to do are loaders. Now those are a little bit trickier because loaders take inserters, transport belts, electronic boards, and tin plate. And I don't have tin plate here. I've got inserters here. I've got belts over here. So maybe this is supposed to be for express belts, right? 
So if I put a machine right here to make loaders, I wonder if there's a way that I could get these things shuttled over there. I think there is. So we're going to pick up from down there. Yep. why I love these adjustable inserters. They really, they, I mean, they allow you to do a lot of really cool stuff that you couldn't do otherwise. All right, um, now the circuit boards, we can get that way. And we have tin up here. So we could pull some tin down that. How long do these take to make? Oh, five seconds. Okay. Put a chest there. Uh, we'll just do one stack. All right. Now here we could use a filter inserter <coughs> to pull tin plate off of that belt. <coughs> Pardon me. There we go. That's not so bad, is it? Probably not the most elegant solution, but uh, I'm just glad that I got to do it without having to rebuild inserters and belts in another location. Okay, um, I wanted to grab more nanobots. Okay, got plenty now. Nice, okay. Good. So we're all set with that for now. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about washing clay bricks. So I'm going to go to a new production line here. We'll add a recipe. I'm just going to search for it. Clay. Yeah, look for clay. Clay brick. All right. Now I think. I'm not sure how much clay brick I really need, but let's just let's just compute for one factory. And if it ends up being way too big, then we can revise it downward. So let's assume that we're going to have one steel furnace making clay brick, um, because I don't I don't think we need to produce it in high amounts. I think we just, you know, we, we need it to build machines from time to time. But I don't think we need to produce it like on a huge scale. All right, so um, clay, brick, bleh, clay bricks require unburnt clay bricks to start with. All right, so let's make those with assembly machine twos. We'll need three of those. And then those require clay, sand, and lime. Okay, so let's start with the clay first. Clay comes from washing plants. We'll make those Mark I washing plants. This says we're gonna need three. Okay, and then those come from, actually I'm, I wanna do the other ingredients before we start calculating the water recipes. Um, all right, so we only need one making sand. Lime needs to be made in a blast furnace from limestone. And limestone comes from water as well, also from a washing plant. All right, so we need 
we'll need three washing plants making clay, one making sand, and two making limestone, which will then convert into lime with a single blast furnace. We'll also need to make some carbon di or no, I'm sorry, we're going to receive carbon dioxide as a byproduct, which I'll probably just put in a gas tank and, uh, and flare off the excess. Okay, so now we need three different types of water. We need concentrated mud water, thin mud water, and light mud water. And I think they come out in that order. So if we start with the concentrated, I think we're only going to need one machine, right? Yep. So we need one machine making concentrated. I think we'll only need one of each. That's light and thin. Okay. So that's what we're going to need. So we're going to need three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. We need nine washing plants. Are those in water treatment? Yes. Okay, and for that I need iron pipes. And I think I'm just going to use brick pipes or stone pipes um, when I build this. How many did I make? Two, seven. All right, let's get more stone brick. I think we said we needed nine altogether. Three, five, six, nine. Yep. Right, so let's run up here and grab some stone brick. Uh, with the current version of, of Bob's Mods, um, the different the different pipes all have the same characteristics. All right, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so there's my washing plants. I'm gonna need a seafloor pump. That's how we get the concentrated mud water from our water source. I'm going to need one blast furnace, which I get from Metallurgy. There we go. Um, I'm going to need a steel furnace and I'm going to need three assembly machine Mark twos, which I don't have, but I am making down here in the supplies area. So let's grab some of those. <clears throat> If you watched my previous series, you probably have heard me complain about calling this a shopping mall. <laughs> because I don't like shopping malls in general. Um, but that's what everybody calls it. So, All right, now where are we going to put this? Um, this is a really nice attractive space, but I want to leave this open for electricity. So I think washing could be done up here. No, that's not a good place either. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can fit it in over here for clay bricks. Uh, and the reason I don't want to put it up between the resource patches and And this is that um, eventually I'm going to be adding train stations here to bring in supplies from outside and I want to be able to to belt it in across this way. So that's why I don't want to start putting things in the way of that. Um, yeah, and unfortunately there's this is the only water we have close by. So I think this is going to be our best option. All right, so let's... Um, where am I going? Over here. I got out of the car too early. Looks like we're doing good on coal. And on our fuel production. Oh, 
Alright, and we uh, we cleared out the the extra bobmonium that I wanted to get rid of, so that's good. Okay. Yeah, so actually why don't I'll make it over here to the left of the of the fuel plant. So why don't we actually, let's throw down some more path. And what I'll do, ugh, no, I'm not gonna relocate all that. Well, we're just gonna have a discontinuity in our stone path, I'm sorry to say. I think we'll just have to live with that. Not a big deal. Okay. So, if the stone path would normally be right here, then let's... I think I have that... Is that lined up properly? It's easier to do a map view. Yeah. Okay, good. Alright, so this will be... This will be the upper bounds of our washing facility. Okay. So let's get started. So we're going to start with... Uh, my spacing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so that's going to be our first washing plant. Now this one is going to take viscous mud water, which is what we actually get out of the lake, and it's going to turn it into heavy mud water. So that's going to be the first thing that we make. Is that going to stretch across? No, it will not. So let's... Do that and I think what we'll do is we'll just come up and we'll bring that water in alongside this other pipe that way we'll keep things somewhat tidy All right, uh, where's my pump? All right, so here's the seafloor pump. Um, it seems like as good a place as any. Okay, so now we're pulling viscous mud water from the seafloor. And then that goes into producing um, heavy mud water. It's also we're also going to get clay as a byproduct, and we can you know we'll have to figure out something to do with the clay. Now I usually leave a space in between these machines uh, with a pipe in the middle, just in case I decide I need to tap in at any stage here. So this is kind of like this works kind of like a multi-stage filtration system where you go from one level to another. Each stage takes more and more of the mud and gunk out of the water, and you get a thinner and thinner solution as you go forward. All right, so this is giving us heavy mud water. From heavy mud water, we can make concentrated mud water. And from concentrated mud water, we can make light mud water. From light mud water, we can make thin mud water. And I think that's as far as we need to go. Light, concentrated, light, one of these used thin. Yeah, the sand needs thin mud water. All right, so that's as far as we need to go with this. Um, and these require regular water as an input too. Which, when you think about it, it makes sense because you're gonna, because we're gonna be getting the same volume out as we put in. So for every, for every 200 viscous mud water, we're gonna put out 200 heavy mud water. But since we're taking mud out, that's gonna reduce the volume of what we put in. So we add more pure water to it to give us the 200 units out. All right, so we're gonna need to. We're going to need to add water pipes here. And I wish I would have picked up more stone pipe while I was over at the supplies area. 
All right, so I think we're going to need another pipeline here. Um, and I'm I'm making some of these pipe runs short just so that everything lines up. All right, so in this case, we're going to need a regular offshore pump. There we go. All right, and I'm leaving that other water pipe alone so that that one is dedicated to whatever it's being used for. I don't recall right now. There we go. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that water is going to our Coke production, Coke pellets. All right, so now we've got water. We've got viscous mud water. Um, let's go ahead and start to power this up. I'm going to put the poles... Well, let's put them right here for now. And we'll put a light. Uh, and now I can use my large power poles to distribute things a little bit more cleanly. Okay, and now we can see that it's starting to work. Okay. And then uh, these have a cycle time of five. One mud comes out. So, um, actually, let's put this, I guess, in the center. So we'll need to have an inserter with the mud being removed. Why don't we make a warehouse to start storing these things? And I don't have enough ingredients. All right, let's go get some warehouse stuff. Wow. Uh, I thought I had a repair pack. I guess not. Like I said, I'm pretty bad at driving these things. All right. So I need iron plate, I need steel plate, and I need stone brick. All right. I'm just gonna go ahead and make three, that way I'll have some extras for when I need it. Oh, I did stop research a while ago. Um, let's start researching logistic train network. I'm going to want to get that sooner or later. Actually, as soon as possible, but uh, we're going to need to make circuits and stuff before we can do that. Okay. Um, all right, so for now, let's just imagine that the warehouse is going to go there, but we may decide to move that later. Okay, so um, now let's we can start making the other ingredients. So the first one, uh, I think clay is the one that... Yeah, clay requires concentrated mud water which comes out of this second machine. So let's take a look here. And I need three machines making clay. And these require water as well as the concentrated mud water. All right, so let's do something like this.
All right, and then uh, we can also pipe in our water here. Play yet. Oh, I have to rotate these. There we go. Okay. So now we're making clay. And these are produced at a rate of three every five seconds. Um, so yeah, I think a single yellow inserter on each of those should be enough. And we'll throw in a couple lights here for good measure. All right, so there's our clay. And then the next is the limestone. So we're gonna need two for limestone. And those require the light mud water, which is coming out here. All right, I'm gonna have to move that power pole. Let's put that there. All right, so if I make this limestone, there. Does that work? Yeah, good. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't gonna have a problem with this other pipe being so close. All right, so for the limestone, we need two. All right, now here I am gonna have an issue because how am I gonna get the limestone out? No, I think we're good. All right, let's get rid of that light. And then what I'll do is I'll put another pipe there. Okay, and then I will also place an underground here. And I'm out of pipes. All right, let's go back and get some more pipes. All right, and I know that I'm already over time, but uh, a lot of you have said that you like the longer episodes. Uh, in fact, everyone who has commented on it said that they do like the longer episodes. So I am going to assume for the moment that you don't mind if I run a little bit long today. Uh, let's do batteries next. Oh no, I'm making my stone pipes up there. There we go. And I think we'll be able to finish this up fairly quickly. Oops. Okay. And I'm just putting that underground there so that I can get my inserters coming out here. All right, so we'll just take that up, up to the side here. All right, so there's my limestone. Um, now the limestone has to be converted into lime, and for that we need the blast furnace. Yeah, so actually I don't want this belt to go all the way that way. And I need a flare stack so that we can get rid of the CO2. And as I say that, I realize that I should also give myself a storage tank and I need more stone brick. Ugh, I have to run back again. 
Okay, let's make uh, an overflow valve. Can I make a flare stack? No, I need stone brick. Okay. Let me run back. This is one of those cases where having like the really cheaty version of long reach where you can <laughs> you can open up map view and grab stuff from anywhere. Uh, this is where having something like that would come in handy. Okay, so I'll make a petrochem petro gas tank. I'll make a flare stack. And we'll use that for the CO2. And I'm making the gas tank just so we can accumulate, um, you know, a healthy supply of it. Because we can use we can use CO2 to make algae, and this way we'll have some CO2 that we're already making available for other purposes. Armor crafting three. Um, I don't think I need that. Let's do let's do rope. Yeah, I guess we do need robotics. Let's do stack inserter. We're gonna need those before too much longer. Okay, um, now the CO2 tank, I think I will just put over here. That way it'll be, it'll be fairly close to the pathway for us to route it to other places where it might be needed. Okay, and we'll put the flare stack right there. Uh, flare stacks do need power. I'll just use a small electric pole for that. There. Nice. Okay. So this takes uh, four limestone a second, and it gives us five lime per second. And both of those can be accomplished with a single inserter. Uh, we do have to provide it fuel, which I will give it some coke right now. Um, and we could bring over fuel pellets. All right, I'll, I'll figure that out uh, once we get the rest of this set up. All right, so finally we need the sand. All right, and it looks like we only need one washing plant for sand. And it seems like I am short a washing plant. Why is that? Okay, well, I must have counted incorrectly. I think maybe I didn't count that first one. All right, so in any case, this one is going to give us thin mud water, which is what we need for sand. There we go. All right, and that one I'm just gonna put here at the end. And we need regular water as well. And that gives us five sand every five seconds. So a, uh, a single inserter coming out will do the job. I guess we could bring it out here. All right. And then my thinking was that we can we can, I think we can just put these on a single belt. And we'll use loaders to put everything into a warehouse. There are my loaders. Okay, and then we also have the mud, which will go in here as well. 
Okay. Let's figure out the fuel. I don't think I'm going to be able to weep across here, am I? Nope. But I can leap across here. a lot of fuel so uh, just to make it simpler I'm gonna bring I'll just bring regular coke from here you know rather than the coke pellets there we go all right um, and now we just need to make the bricks. So from this, we're going to need three assembly machines. So I'll put these like this. One, two, three. Actually, let's... There we go. Clay, unburnt clay bricks. All right, and these require eight ingredients in every four seconds. So I'll just put fast inserters on these. Throw a light in there. All right, and then a single steel furnace. So how do we feed all these into one steel furnace? Um, I think we can... Yeah, that's not going to be easy to do. Oh, and this is going to need fuel too, actually. Um, I don't think I can make electric furnaces yet. Nope. see steel furnace can go here I'll put a fast inserter on that does that work yeah Nice. Actually, maybe that doesn't have to be so awkward. How about that? Yeah, that works. Okay. All right, so now we're getting the bricks. And these are giving us four every second or two, so we should probably have a fast inserter on those. Whoops. Fast inserter on those. those in with a loader as well okay so now we're making clay brick let me empty this out so we can get caught up here it seems like maybe we don't need all three of these but we'll let it go like that and then the other thing I'm gonna to want to do is put limits on the input belts Right, because we need these in a four to two to two, or a two clay, one sand, one lime ratio. So I'll put some limits on these input belts uh, just to make sure that they are coming in at that ratio. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, since we need to control these individually, I think we'll just put clay on its own belt. Uh, 
uh, because clay is the one that we need in a different ratio than the limestone and the sand. Uh, so this way I'll be able to control each ingredient individually. Um, and then finally, you know, eventually we'll have to do something with the mud as well. I know that we can turn it into landfill. Um, there might be some other uses for it. Let's see. We can turn it back into viscous mud water. Oh, okay, and it looks like we can use it for trees. Ah, yeah, so that's going to come in handy. So we definitely want to hang on to the mud. I'm not going to turn it into landfill. <laughs> we can get landfill from <laughs> many other uh, many other sources. So, All right, so that's going to do it for now. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.